Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Books Are Everywhere. So today I'm here with my whatever thon TBR. I am so excited for whatever you want thon. I did it last year and I read 24 books in the month. I doubt I will do that again this year but I am still super excited to take part. I really really enjoyed it last year and essentially this is a readathon where you can read whatever you want which is why it's probably my favourite readathon. I have honestly gotten so many people to join because it's just so versatile. If you want to read like anything you literally just have to sign up um, and log the books you've read and you essentially set yourself a goal and if you beat that goal you get extra points which is really cool. If you want to find out more details about the readathon because there is a lot of ins and outs I will leave the announcement video down below. It is by Maddie over at Book Browsing Blog who I love but I am joining Team Shelf Slayer. There are different teams and the teams only really mean who the hosts are, like they differ and the prompts you get also differ. You don't have to cover the prompts, you don't have to do any prompts at all if you don't want to, but I will be doing prompts. I find that readathons just are more fun for me personally when I have prompts to work to and I just like making a TBR like this and choosing which prompts that will fit with the books I want to read. So that's something I personally really enjoy but you don't have to do that at all. But as I said I am on team Shelf Slayers. I do love the hosts but also I am really choosing this one because of the prompts. Um, I will put the bingo board here with the prompts that I will be choosing from. So the bingo board is the same for everybody and then some of the prompts do differ depending on what team you're on. So the one here is the prompts for Shelf Slayers which are in purple and then the rest of them everybody gets. But yeah I will be talking you through most of the prompts on here. Some of them as you can see are things like a cosy reading time or join um, a sprint or a guilt-free activity. I won't really be covering those, um, I might just mention them, but I'll be going through the, the books I want to read. So the big thing you just need to know for this video is that you can log three prompts per book, um, so you can just cover three different prompts which is partly what I'll be doing in some of these books. I have used them for several different prompts which I will say as the video goes on and I talk you through the books that I would want to, I will want to read in June. So the first book is Only on the Weekends by Dean Atta and this is covering a different format and purple cover so far, so that's two prompts. This is a different format because it's told partly in, well all in verse rather than prose and it's also got some text messages in as well. This is by the same author as The Black Flamingo which I absolutely loved and this is following two boys in a long distance relationship basically seeing if they can kind of make it work and the one of them that's moved away also has a kind of connection with somebody else and he's having to kind of choose between them. I loved The Black Flamingo so I'm really excited to read this one. And the next one is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas which I have been reading for about two months or more, maybe three months at this point. I've only got 150 pages into this one but I'm determined to finally finish it in June. I just had things keep cropping up and with me finishing my degree it's just been too much to actually take on this beast when I have a lot of other books on TBRs I wanted to get to but I will be finishing it in June. So the prompts I've got for this one are the the and of a and which is any book that has any of those uh, words in the title so this one is house elf sky and breath so it has of and and in there it's also under on a previous tbr because as i said i've been trying to read this for a few months so it's been on a few tbrs and hybrid genre for fantasy romance which is basically when there's like cross genre so you could do like a romance contemporary a romance fantasy contemporary fantasy um loads of different combinations, whatever fits for you. Um, but yeah, I'm determined to finish this because I do love Sarah J Mars, but I do find this series quite slow in comparison to her other books. And it took me a long time to get through House of Earth and Blood, but I was really getting into this one. I can't tell you much about it because it is the second book in the Crescent City series. But essentially this series follows Bryce. It's an urban fantasy and it's a world where kind of there are fan and it's set in a world where there are werewolves and fae and different creatures and all of them control a different part of this city and at the start of the first book which is House of Earth and Blood Bryce goes into her apartment one night to see her friend who is a werewolf Danica has been brutally murdered and as she's kind of exploring what happened to Danica she is also taken under the wings literally of Hunt who is a demon? 
I always say this and I'm like, is he a demon? But he's also kind of a part of like the police essentially. So he's sent to kind of watch over her. So it's very good. I was enjoying it, but I just put it down because I needed to read other things and I'm very excited to get back to it. And the next book I want to read is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix and this fits under under 300 pages, a spooky book and does it fit under anything else? Yes, a one word title because I really struggled to find a book for that but this one is essentially set in an Ikea, it's not, it's an Orsk in Cleveland, Ohio but it's essentially Ikea as you can see it is formatted like an Ikea catalogue which I absolutely love. It is so, so clever. I'm so excited to read this one. Um, but basically this follows kind of spooky things happening in this Ikea and it follows the employees as they're having to take on a night shift to find out what is happening in this store overnight because there's like things falling over and they don't know what's happening and nothing's being captured on CCTV. Very excited to read this one. And it's the first book I will re be reading by Grady Hendrix as well. And the next book on this list is Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn and this is also covering three different prompts. So this is covering a weapon on the cover, favourite genre and what's the other one? It covers another one, Recently Hauled, because <laughs> I have recently bought this one. And it's also one I want to read before Yelk as well, which is very helpful. And this one I've heard is kind of Six of Crows-esque. Um, as I said, it's got a weapon on the cover, which is one I thought I'd find hard, but it's got like a pin thing that is where it's got blood on it and a guillotine that's got blood on it as well um it's one that i've recently bought because i really want to read it and i chose my favorite genre as fantasy so it's a fantasy book i've heard really good things about this one it's set in paris in 19 no in 1794 and it's following a bat bat battalion of the dead so it's a collection of people who call themselves this so they have to basically complete these missions together. As I said, it kind of sounds like Six of Crows and I'm very excited for it. And the next one on this list is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. This one is for a book that I borrowed. Now technically I was gifted this because a friend who decided to unhaul it and sent it to me, but I am stretching it a little bit. Essentially this follows Mina who moves to New Orleans to live with her sister and she starts working at this horror movie mansion while she's there and then she finds the body of a girl who is actually clutching a lock of her sister's hair and she thinks that somebody's impersonating the town's supernatural kid killings and she must prove her sister's innocence. I can't wait to read this one, I've heard really good things and I love that it's set in New Orleans as well. And next I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid which I am very excited for, I know Courtney will be very excited for me to read this because I've never read it. I have read Daisy Jones and the Six and I didn't love it as much as everybody else did but I feel like I'm gonna like this one a lot more. And this is for a host favourite, it's also last letter, first letter because only on the weekends ends in S and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo starts in with S so I'm going to read those back to back and it's also a less read genre because this is kind of fiction which I don't really read general fiction that much but essentially this follows Evelyn Hugo who's finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. She's a Hollywood icon um, but when she chooses to but when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s and of course the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn explores a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's own in tragic and irreversible ways. Sounds really good. I know I'm going to love it. I hope. <laughs> I'm very excited. And then we have a couple in the Curse So Dark and Lonely series. So I have A Heart So Fierce and Broken, which covers a colour on the cover, which is green, which I got Mark to choose a random colour for me. And then I also have continuous series and I think that's it for this one um but this one essentially is the second book in the A Curse of Dark and Lonely series and I'm also going to be reading the last one which is A Thousand Bold and Deadly for 2021 release so I'm going to hopefully read this whole 
series in June. I have read the first one before but I never carried on with the series so me and Alex are going to hopefully buddy read these together in the month of June before Yalk in July because Bridget Camera is going to be at Yalk. So this one follows Prince Wren and Harper. So this is a contemporary fantasy set between a fantasy world and modern day kind of Washington DC. So it follows Prince Wren who is the heir to Emberfall which is this fantasy world and he is cursed. He is forced to repeat the autumn of his 18th year over and over and he can only be freed if a girl falls in love with him and then Harper is dragged into this world. It is a very fast paced, easy to read fantasy romance and very excited to reread the first one and carry on with this series. And the last actual book prompt on this list I think is a poll in which I've put an emoji poll on Twitter so there's four emojis that relate to books and people are picking a book for me which I'm very excited so they don't know what they're picking. The one that's currently winning is Witches Steeped in Gold which I'm very excited. This one follows two witches who enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both of their worlds and yes this one also came up on my TBR mini goal for TBR which I'm excited for as well and managed to fit most of these books onto that TBR which I'm quite happy about. So yeah I'm going to be reading this one probably depending on how the poll goes. So the only prompts left are the grey ones on the bingo board which are cosy reading time which I will do in the month of June, a 48 hour readathon so there is a 48 hour readathon in the middle of the month I think or the I think it's around the middle of the month um, that Maddie is hosting and I will be the host of the readathon will be hosting so just to take part in that at any point, a guilt free activity which I'd like to play some games once I've finished my dissertation so just like play Animal Crossing or maybe some Zelda, I haven't played Zelda in so long so I haven't had time so yeah that. There's also join sprints um, which I'll probably do in the readathon or me and Alex will probably host some sprints as well in the month and complete a personal goal which I have put finish my dissertation and hand in my dissertation because obviously I will be doing that in the month of June and it is a big goal so I might as well use it towards this as well. But yeah those are the books I'm gonna hopefully be reading in June. I'm sorry this video has been quite chaotic but I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time in another video. Bye! Thank you.